Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. Right now we've got uh, ComTub 2 uh, cooking and that is for a contract to put a satellite in a specific orbit around Earth. And that is a relatively high orbit with some inclination uh, but uh, probably not as complicated as our previous satellite contract which had a retrograde orbit. So I think that can do the trick just in case we had a lunar orbiter uh, getting built and that could potentially fulfill that contract so that is another possibility but it would be better to have some sort of lunar mission for that and uh, taking a look at our contract screen we've got this position satellite in a specific orbit of the moon and that lunar orbiter of course can get into an orbit around the moon this has an inclination of 152 degrees and a fairly low orbit uh, so it's a good question whether we could really hit those numbers exactly. Uh, that will take some some doing, but uh, otherwise it just needs an antenna and can generate power, which our probe can do. It's got a little sol solar panel. It can't generate power for very long. Um, yeah, it will die eventually, but it can uh, take care of this uh, with relative ease, I think, hopefully. Um, and they've also given us the lunar impactor, lunar orbiter, and science data from space around the moon. Now, I don't want to turn this in a, into a lunar impactor this time. Uh, but then again, it's going to run out of power, so I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think uh, rather than make it a lunar impactor, we'll just keep it in orbit even if it dies. So that is worth it, isn't it? It's got the uh, science. We, we could use the science. Hmm. Okay, so but that's what I'm thinking about for that lunar orbiter. And uh, this is two years, this is a one year, and this is three years. So let's pick this up. Pick this up. And this is the one year one. That's the tightest, tightest one. We will lose 125,000 if we fail it, but the advance is 93,000, so it's worth it. We'll pick it up. Lunar Impactor, maybe, uh, maybe we should, maybe we should just impact it, because uh, it's not going to survive anyway. Well, so we'll be trying to fulfill four contracts with the same mission then, that's quite, uh, quite impressive. Alright, and the mission will only cost like 16,000 or so, so <laughs> quite lucrative if we can ma manage to get this done. Alright, alright, we'll, we'll try it. Um... The trick with getting into the correct orbit is that we might not have communication at the time when I need to do it. Remember last time, it was tough to get into a low orbit because uh, we didn't have communication right. So we might have to think about that. But well, anyway, we've, uh, we've committed ourselves to that possibility. And that'll take care of our actual contracts. These are just the uh, regular records that we try for. And we haven't really gotten to that yet. And the reason we haven't gotten to those in particular yet, uh, and not to mention the successful re-entry, for instance, is because we don't have heat shields yet. We haven't uh, gotten the technology unlocked to get heat shields. We've got it queued, but we haven't actually got it done. Uh, Kerbal Construction Time is still working on it. Now, we've also got Mars Flyby and Venus Flyby that look interesting. And if we head on out... You can see that I've already got the Earth to Venus and Earth to Mars transfer time indicated here. And so I've got that in mind. In theory, the lunar orbiter could be reworked to send a mission over there if we had the antennae. Taking a look at our tech tree, though, um, this, this technology is already getting researched. You can see it will unlock in 289 days. The one we need after that is this one because that is what has the Reflectron KR7, which will be the antenna we need for that mission. Now, this is not a very heavy antenna. You can see the mass. It'll probably cut the... Uh, well, it might cause problems for our, our little probe. I will have to check out the Delta V situation once we put it on. Yeah, and then, of course, the power situation as well, because this takes 0.18 charge per second, which is quite a lot. So, yeah... But that's that's the dish we need. Now, as far as the heat shields are concerned, we don't get that until here, here, the survivability. So let's take a look at our science queue. All right, so technology, 
survivability is down here after basic construction. I'm going to move it forward. We've already got improved instrumentation underway. But obviously, we need to hurry this up. So I'm going to go to upgrades, and I'm going to buy some points. I'm going to buy 10, I think. And I'm going to put it into R&D, because that's what's slowing us down. We're, our rocket construction isn't that slow. At least it doesn't feel like that's what's holding us up. What's really holding us up right now is I can't uh, get the, the science done in time. So I'm just pumping it all into there. Let's see, uh, well, now that's 191 days for that and 165 days, it's still a long time. But, you know, uh, you know, other things take time too, so I guess it'll be alright. Now, uh, so the first thing we're going to try in this episode is to get that satellite into the specific orbit as defined there. And we've got that cooking already. So let's uh, time warp and finish that up. Okay, so rolling out. And taking a look at the contract, it says inclination 36.8 degrees. By my calculations, that means our heading on launch should be 66 degrees. So that's the launch azimuth that we are aiming for in order to get to that inclination from Cape Canaveral. And for those who don't know, the calculation is cosine of your target inclination divided by cosine of your current inclination. And then uh, arc sine that, so sine to the negative 1 that. Okay, this time again we want to try and line up with the target orbit. Uh, clearly this is not a good time to launch if that is the orbit we're trying to get into, which it is. So I'm gonna monitor my electric charge situation, but otherwise time warp to a more favorable launch timing. And anyway, if we were launching at this point, it wouldn't be 66 degrees, it would be uh, 24, uh, 114 degrees that we would aim for because we'd be heading south this way. But we want to head north and that'll be 66 degrees. Look at all the satellites we've got in orbit already. This is pretty crazy actually. Hmm, might have overdone it there. Okay, uh, we're getting close. It'll take us some time to get up to speed, but probably not that much. Okay, that's pretty convincing. Alright, looks like we've got the right timing. KGR is stabilizing physics. It's a good daytime launch. Our target uh, uh, longitude of ascending node is... 3.8 degrees. Well, anyway, we can't check from that right now. We'll have to wait until we get up to speed before we can rely on that at all. Okay, so uh, SAS is on. Throttle is up. And already Smart ESS. Okay. Looks good. Ignition. And launch. Now we don't need to get into a tight orbit. We can launch it directly into the, uh, well, let's say 1,600 kilometers, looks like. Oh, shoot. I wanted. <laughs> I want 66 degrees actually, thanks. Let's do that while we're going relatively slow. Jeez. Forgetting my own plan. My cunning plan. Okay. Booster set. Boosters are away and clear. And knocking each other or exploding because of aerodynamic stresses. Continuing on. Okay, switching over to SAS and stage separation. Stage set. And ignition. Okay, very good. Looks like the Vanguard is lit. And we can continue with Smart ASS now. Fairing set. Everything looks good. We are turning to the right numbers as far as inclination and longitude of ascending node. Still uh, about uh, 8 degrees off of the longitude of ascending node number. And uh, 
about 2.5 degrees off of the target inclination. Okay, Smart ASS off, SAS on. Set. Ignition. Okay, still looking good. Certainly, uh, there's no question about making orbit. It's just a matter of what orbit. Okay, we are now within one degree of the target inclination and one percent of the target longitude of ascending node, so about three degrees on the longitude of ascending node. I'm not entirely sure I should flatten out, actually, because we do want to get that apoapsis 2621. Still a long ways to go. Okay, good view of the eastern seaboard. Got uh, Maryland, Delaware. Got uh, Massachusetts, New York up there. Yeah, we could have gone low on this side and boosted up the periapsis to 1,600 too. I mean, of course, then it'd become our apoapsis. But that's more or less what I'm going to be doing here. Just waiting for Apple Apps to hit 1,600 here. Okay, we're a little bit high there. Left uh, 107 meters per second behind. Can't relight this, so ignition's remaining zero. But we'll carry it on with us so that the fuel here can reorient us. We could have carried much less hydrazine. This thing gimbals after all. Anyway. But uh, that is the plan. So, yeah, let's go up to Apoapsis and then lift that periapsis up. I think we should have enough. Oh, darn. Right now, this has local control because of the Delta Avionics package. But once we let go and go to the probe itself, it, it won't. So I have to make sure we do have communication. Now, we are high, so that's good. Still seems like we'll be fine at Apoapsis. We're connected through... India there and possibly South Africa as well as our other satellites. Okay, so uh, prograde please and RCS on. Oh, not the upper RCS port though. We can't. Hold on. I need to lock that tank. Okay, I hope all else is fine. Probe core up there has got power. Yes. It's lacking something else though. Oh, it's hydrazine got spent. Darn it! No, I didn't uh, didn't lock that. Anyway, let's get on with this. So separation. Hydrazine. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, but that's not right. Prograde. We may or may not have to make minor adjustments. I think we'll have the fuel for it by the looks of things. Depends on how picky they are. Okay, let's see. How is that for you guys? Maintain stability for 10 seconds. Okay, we fulfilled the contract. I don't see any reason to adjust its orbit to the one they wanted anyway. So we'll just leave it here. Yeah, the orbit they wanted anyway was circular, but uh, yeah, I mean, this will work fine too. Uh, actually, boosting it higher would work better, but uh, I don't see any particular reason to bother with that just yet. Okay, the important thing is to make sure it's oriented towards the sun once the sun comes up, so let's do that. Okay, that'll be fine. And of course, we remember that this particular chord does go into a low power mode so if we can get this right and time warp yeah we've got five times what we need okay so it's a survivor and we're approaching Australia there so anyway good success now what about that lunar contract or oh, those lunar contracts four lunar contracts we're trying to do alright let's go back to the space center and see about those now without the heat shields or better communication dishes I don't know what to do 
about building another rocket because uh, we can't take the contracts to further us along. Yeah, I mean, I can't build the probes necessary, and uh, we, I guess we could build some more stalwarts and just have them wait for other uh, payloads uh, so we could build the rockets and keep them in storage and then edit them in order to add the payload. That's a possibility. But that seems a little bit cumbersome. So I don't know. Um, let's take a look at the science situation because we don't. Well, we wanted that uh, technology with 75 science, right? That had the communication dish that we want. So we still need six more science in order to unlock that. So let's see what we haven't done. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. Uh, for some reason, Earth is still marked Kerbin here. And because it's marked Kerbin, it's not showing me the experiments I've done here. Uh, see, I mean, it's got uh, all the stuff from Earth's upper atmosphere. Earth, 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 Earth. But because it's called Kerbin, I can't see the Earth stuff here. Moon stuff we can see, because that's properly named. How oh, very strange. Um, and the sun, for some reason, has an actual dark side. I, 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 I didn't realize that you could have a dark side of the sun, but you have one now. So, um, go figure. Did not realize that. Alright, well, uh, let's see. Mystery Goo seems to be an uh, interesting possibility. Upper atmosphere, flying at Earth's in space near Earth. We could potentially toss a Mystery Goo high over the Earth. That's something we haven't done. Or to the moon, which we also haven't done. Okay, let me put together a rocket that could get goo at least high over the Earth or to the moon. So we'll attach it to the stalwart, basically. Okay, so what I've done is I have adjusted the, the probe portion of the lunar orbiter to accommodate the goo container, so I made this a little bit larger. And actually, it still has enough delta V to get into orbit around the moon. And I've left the science instruments on top, just for the heck of it, because they don't cost that much. And it still has just the two solar panels, so it will run out, or run out of power in about four days. So you see, drain 0 0.06, generation 0 0.03. Now, when I add this, you can see that I've added two solar panels to it, one here, one here and the generation is above the drain and of course all these solar panels do face the sun at the same time uh, though not at the ideal angles necessarily because these are a little bit bent around now this is why I mean even without the two panels I thought this portion would be able to recharge just fine but apparently maybe the antennae cost it, costs uh, I mean, cost it a little bit too much in terms of electric charge I don't know but uh, yeah, it didn't work out last time. Uh, maybe with the extra two solar panels, it'll work out this time, but I'm not sure. Because uh, these are the only numbers I've got going for me right now. Anyway, but that's the idea. And uh, it shouldn't do too much to our delta V right now. Uh, we could potentially increase this stage a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Let's see, I want to increase the size of the top container because otherwise I'll be increasing the amount of hydrazine it's carrying, which I don't need. Okay, I wanted 3,124, usually a good number. And I'll actually reduce the amount of hydrazine that is carrying. Okay, 3,124 meters per second. Should be good enough. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Lunar Goo. And we don't have a contract for it, we're mainly trying to get science out of it. Okay, but before we do the Goo, we will be trying out this Lunar Orbiter mission to fulfill those four contracts. Now, if it fails, then it's possible that we could have this Lunar Goo contract fulfill some of it. Uh, I mean, Lunar Goo launch fulfill some of it. So we'll see about that. But anyway, here we go. Okay, I've time warped to a point where we have very low relative inclination to the moon. Kerbal Joint Reinforcement has done its thing. SAS is on. Throttle is up. Smart ASS is prepped. 
And let's get some distance because we've got six engines. Ignition. And launch. Handing over to Smart ASS. Okay, we're definitely past the speed of sound now. Acceleration beyond 2G's. Thing going quite well. I'm not going as steeply as I did last time. I think that was really overdoing it. So I'm gonna try and... I mean, uh, last time I launched this rocket. Gotta try and get into a tighter orbit this time. Didn't seem like we needed to reserve as much time to apoapsis as I did before. So I'm not going to, but uh, I might overdo it in the other direction, so... We'll see. It's certainly nice not to have the decouplers overheating all the time. Gonna be separating the boosters soon. Okay, set. And they're off. Should put the parachutes on them and see if uh, stage recovery can get them back for us. We're not going that fast. There's a chance that they would survive a uh, drogue chute and some main chutes. Stage recovery is in the habit of telling me that stuff is destroyed, right? Yeah, so stage recovery seems to work here. We might as well make it work for us. Just spamming our message box. Where would our lunar transfer take place? Uh, well, we're definitely on the wrong side right now. We want, want it to take place uh, around over here somewhere, and we are on we're on that side. So no direct transfer to the moon. We're still gonna get pretty high, it looks like. And to some extent, I want to make sure I use all the fuel in these stages. So I don't know if I should flatten out so much and try and maintain a tight orbit when last time we we got to the high orbit and still had some fuel left, I think. Set. And ignition. Okay, both vanguards are lit, as are their vernier thrusters. Let's separate the fairings. Mainly to see the stage time and delta V properly. And extend the supplementary antennae. Well, actually, the main antenna in this case. Now, this version doesn't have the extra solar panels. I should probably have edited it, but uh, didn't think about that. We've got a bit of a rocking back and forth. Probably the verniers going this way and that. It looks a bit st more stable right now. Switching to SAS. Separation. Ignition. Alright. RD-0105 has ignited. Everything looks good. Smart ASS back on. Well, we're in a lower orbit, but not a low orbit per se. Like I said, I don't think this thing with its long burn time will have an easy time getting below 300 kilometers. But, uh, yeah. Doesn't look too bad right now. We'll end up with some fuel left over. Once again, this was built for a larger payload. Maybe I should have 
made a larger payload. Maybe the Gulon should have gotten a little bit more Delta V on the top. We'll have to reassess that. Okay, we're about to pass Apoapsis here, which is good. This was a much better trajectory altogether than the last time we launched this. We'll retain this stage to use its hydrazine to orient ourselves before separating and burning for the moon. Okay, the other side's actually the wrong side, so uh, 347 by 264 will be fine. We've got 600 meters per second left this time, like I said, a better trajectory overall. And uh, yeah, uh, if we uh, kept pushing the periapsis out, that just push us further away from the Earth on this side which isn't very helpful if we're trying to get to the moon on that side. Well, anyway, that's my logic, and I'm sticking to it. So, yep, anyway, uh, let me plot out a uh, trajectory. We'll need a uh, retrograde orbit around the moon, so probably something like a free return trajectory. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so our stage, our transfer stage is 3,124, and if you recall, we have to burn at least that. So I've contrived a uh, set of prograde, radial, normal, to try and get as close to the target orbit as possible. We are coming in retrograde here, coming in, going out, so correct direction, a little bit of an inclination problem that we'll have to fix with the RCS on the probe itself, And uh, but otherwise the target periapsis 31 kilometers is correct, I believe. Yep, 31 kilometers. Now, we won't be in communication very easily with Earth, though we'll be over here, so I don't know exactly what the orientation will be. It's possible that this periapsis will actually be over here somewhere and in in communication, which would be ideal. Uh, it might not be. We'll have to see. And that's really what everything hinges upon. Right now it looks like we've got a good, good transfer, so let us go with that and see what happens. Okay. So uh, I will turn towards the point right now, and I'll do that myself rather than relying on any of our computer friends here. Upper tanks are locked, so hydrazine locked there. Let's stabilize a bit. Okay, uh, this is an interesting pass at Earth, I really need to check. I've done a lot of shenanigans here, so I want to check my periapsis. It looks fine. So we shouldn't be cutting Earth too closely, hopefully. Okay. All right, with sunrise on the horizon, throttle is up, and Sep. Uh oh. Oh right. We have to unlock this. Haha. <laughs> okay. That's unlocked. And propellant's very stable. Right? <laughs> Alright, let's go. Oh shoot. Oh crud. Ah uh, I made a mistake. Ah. Uh, Made a throttle error. Throttle error. Ah. Uh, sorry, folks. I accidentally throttled down. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, this is one of those things where you, if you don't, can't revert. Anyway, clearly lacking sleep or something. I have no idea. Why did I do that? Ah. Uh. Okay, well, uh, yes, sorry, bad mistake, and uh, I must have mistaken this for an SRB. Okay, well, uh, fortunately, this did not cost us very much, and we can try again, So, and we will do that. So, next episode, probably focusing on the moon with various missions, and trying to wait out the time that the uh, technology... Uh, gets unlocked. We could boost this to a higher orbit still using the RCS and potentially use it as a communication satellite. Uh, but it doesn't have quite as much 
solar panel re as the goo version. I'm, I'm just going to repurpose it now, I think. I guess we'll separate that, or, uh, yeah, we'll separate that core, but I don't think it's got to be enough juice. Takes 50 watts. Yeah, we'll still got, we, we are still going to be short power. But maybe we can do some science? I don't know. Um, this one is surface biome dependent. Not really. Okay, well, sorry about this folks, but uh, next time we will try better and I will look forward to doing that soon. But for now, I'll have to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.